going on guys pixelated back at it again with another video review i know it's been a while i haven't recorded in a while i haven't been keeping up but this is what we're here for baby we're coming back strong i'm going to make up to you guys for it by not just giving you one sneaker review not two not three but four we're doing four sneakers in one video so let's get started here we have the NMD Triple Black XR1, obviously a new iteration of the NMD R1 PK. I would consider this a spin-off of the NMD R1 PK because the R2 PK is set to release next year. So the NMD XR1 Triple Black, also known as the most stylish work shoes on planet Earth because all black shoes as we know are a requirement for many jobs out there and you're going to be serving that Egg Mac hype in these like it's nothing. As with the Triple White XR1s, these these have the heel cage as well that helps add support to the shoe so your foot doesn't feel as free form. I've heard quite a few people say that you can go true to size on these because of the heel cage and how it makes the shoe more narrow and makes it uncomfortable to wear if you go down in size. I can tell you that this is definitely not true. I can still go half to a full size down in these just as I can in the NMD R1 PK. I didn't think I'd really care for the fact that it's a triple black shoe because I don't normally like all black shoes but when I saw these in person it was a whole different story. This is probably Probably my favorite colorway of the XR1 now. Easily trumps the Mastermind XR1 which I thought was very overrated. The upper on these has a pinstripe rib pattern going all across it, sort of like something you'd see on a suit. So these are obviously classier than your average work shoes. We of course then have the all black leather tongue patch embossed with the Adidas trefoil logo and the all black pull tab on the back along with the heel counter which I believe is suede. Basically everything on this shoe is black aside from the bottom. If you look through the sole of the shoe you'll see that the boost at the bottom you'll see that adidas either inconveniently forgot to dye it or they might have thought for some reason that nobody would care if it was not dyed from the bottom whatever the case may be this was something that nmd hype beasts were definitely not happy about and probably killed some of the hype behind the shoe as with the xr1 silhouette i prefer the ankle collar of the xr1 as opposed to the r1 even though it's not completely pk and has a little pipe liner action going around because it feels like it holds on to the ankle better than the pk r1 gives you a better lockdown and we all know nmds are not known for their lockdown and on your feet i call these the midnights the boatmobiles charcoals for the simple reason that they're all the same color if you're wearing them at night good luck to your feet nobody's gonna see them it's trample season. You're getting your feet stomped on. <laughs> also, shout out to my good friend Kyla for wearing her brother's pair for this video review. If you're wondering why they look a little big on those feet, that's probably why. Feel free to check out her Instagram at KylaRM. And moving on to the next one. All right, on to the next shoe. The next shoe is a consortium collab. It is the Adidas X Concepts EQT Boost, also known as the 9316 because of the mix of the classic EQT support silhouette that came out in 1993 and the Ultra Boost midsole, which is obviously a 2015 to 2016 innovation. They're basically mixing the old with the new with these and it's a cool concept. Shout out to Concepts. Concepts is a boutique based in New York. Okay, you know what? You're gonna interrupt my review like that? You're just gonna jump in with your budget sneaker? You can do that again. You know what, just for that, I'm cutting this review short. Just listen to this guy laugh. That's all you need to hear. <laughs> you hear that? Dude sounds like a Neanderthal. Bridge troll clown sound and muff just creeps up on. This gargoyle needs to beat it like MJ. What's he doing in here? Just ruining the mood killing the vibes all right so should i get back to the review oh well would you look at that he did beat it like mj this is why you don't bring your friends to a review see guys this is why if you have annoying friends just leave them at home you don't need to bring them with you toss them a controller let them play some games at home toss them some food or some wild fruits in the case of this bridge troll and keep it moving all right back to the review Ugh. Anyways, Concepts is a New York boutique that derived their inspiration for these shoes from two famous heists. The first one being the Lufthansa heist at JFK Airport, which inspired the black and white colorway with the mesh toe box. With one, over $5 million were stolen with one of the largest investigations to ever occur, for which the first conviction actually happened in 2014, roughly 35 years after the crime. That's only two years ago, guys. 
The second colorway, which is the one you see in this video, is the Sage colorway, inspired by the Blue Room heist at the Isabella Stewart Gardner Museum in Boston, Massachusetts. Over $500 million worth of paintings were stolen. Take that in, $500 million back then, 1990 was worth a lot more than what it is now. 13 paintings worth $500 million. The perpetrators have never been found to this day. And it seems like I'm running out of video footage, so I might come back to these a little later. Hint, hint. On to the third pair of shoes, it is the Ultra Boost 2.0 in the bronze metal colorway. These dropped during the 2016 Summer Olympics alongside the gold medal and the silver medal Ultra Boosts, also known collectively as the Metal Pack. Personally, these are my favorite out of the three, not just because I got that underdog mentality, but because the gold and silver just looked a little too shiny and I felt like they were going to look a little plasticky. The upper of the, the bronze Ultra Boost is basically the core black 2.0 Ultra Boost colorway, but it has bronze hits as you can see in the heel cup, the lace tips, as well as the tongue, as well as the Adidas uh, text and logo on the tongue. Otherwise, it's basically just a core black 2.0 Ultra Boost. Nothing to write home about, but I personally like these the best out of all three. Not much more to say there about these. They sold out almost immediately on release day. There have been a few restocks since then because it has been quite a while. Not particularly in Canada, but just on several websites in general. I really like the brushed bronze metal look on the heel cup on these, and I'm glad I chose these over the other two. Although I should mention the gold metal Ultra Boost had a leather cage and the silver metal Ultra Boost had si shiny silver knitting weaved into the rest of the core black prime knit. So the upper wasn't exactly the same as the core black Ultra Boost 2.0 as it was with the gold and bronze Ultra Boost. All I'm going to say is if you are going to wear these, please don't wear these to any athletic competitions. You're basically giving yourself third place by placing yourself in that mentality, but do wear them to look good. That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. I'm just not trying to be held responsible if you get the short end of the victory stick. With that being said, on to the next shoe. The fourth shoe in this review is yet another Adidas collab. It is the Adidas Consortium X Mastermind Japan Tubular Instinct. There were two shoes in this collaboration as well. One of the shoes being the Tubular Instinct as you see on my feet in this video at the moment. The other one being the NMD XR1. Now of course this isn't one of the typical Adidas hype models because one there's no boost. There's no boost so it's not as highly coveted to i'm not a big fan of this silhouette there was never a tubular instinct that i saw where i was like oh i really want that but if i were to pick one it would be this a little story about how i got these livestock basically surprise dropped the nmd the mastermind collab in store whenever they received it the day of i drove down as soon as i saw the post and they told me they sold out i drove from mississauga which is about a 30 minute drive as soon as i got there they told me it sold out within the first 10 to 15 minutes of the post and so i picked these up instead now earlier i said if i were to pick one tubular instinct it would be these and i'm going to tell you why one it's almost all the upper is entirely made of this really soft leather like when you're reviewing air jordans you're always looking for the best leather best quality and to be honest these are probably comparable to the highest quality leather on any air jordan and that's saying something because you don't really get high quality leather all the time on them you have to wait for the coveted silhouettes or the coveted colorways where they decide to put the higher quality on there but these came straight out of the bat with high quality leather regardless of it not being a highly coveted sneaker or a highly coveted silhouette other things i like about this shoe the zippers on the back i'm not really i don't really see the practicality of the zippers or any zippers on the back of any shoe like i'm not trying to slide my foot out from the back while i'm walking but it adds a nice aesthetic i guess and it's something you don't see on every shoe i also like the black and white speckled laces they're really long and rope laces so there's always a lot of freedom to customize and lace the shoe the way you'd like to lace them i have the shoes laced in two different variations here one is just a lower lace while the other takes advantage of the higher lace holes and i really like the large skull and bones mastermind japan logo planted on the side heel counter of these shoes to be honest i wouldn't have really liked these without that logo just because as i said earlier i'm not a huge fan of all black shoes but truthfully i'm really not into these shoes it just feels like adidas can't get non-boost shoes right because the midsole feels like a brick don't get me wrong there are boots out there that not to say that these are the least comfortable shoes i've ever worn but with adidas at the forefront of comfort with boost technology these non-boost shoes feels like they shot themselves in the foot 
no pun intended. The toe box is a bit too obtuse and goofy looking to me. Along with the silhouette in general, there's nothing appealing about this shoe to me. I do really like the fact that it has a red bottom, the large skull logo, and the speckled laces, but in general, the silhouette just doesn't really do it for me. I will say that these would be great for the winter just because they're thick and they've got the soft leather. You don't see me jumping around in them much because they are boots. They are, they are heavier than any boost shoe that you'll wear. They are still lighter than a lot of boots I've ever worn, and I don't know what it is, but you surprisingly get a lot of stability with tubular midsoles. I feel like that's what they're trying to accomplish with the tubular design, so if you have balancing issues, which I kind of do sometimes, <laughs> these might be good shoes for you. I feel like these shoes are predominantly for the SM crowd with the like leather, edgy branding, and black and white colorway. So if that's your thing, I mean, by all means, I got a size 9.5 fits like a 10 hit me up if you want them all right now back to the shoes we were talking about in the beginning of the video obviously a lot more to cover on these so let's get back into it just to recap, these were inspired by the Blue Room heist at the Isabella Stewart Gardner Museum in Boston, Massachusetts. Perpetrators were never caught. Camo socks so you can't find my ankles like the perpetrators. Like I said, this was a mix of two Adidas silhouettes. The upper is the EQT support silhouette but and the bottom is the Ultra Boost midsole. I am so glad they made these because I owned a pair of EQT support shoes beforehand without the Boost midsole and they just look too bulky on feet and I just don't like the fit. The whole one slit tongue thing, I don't think works very well for a snug fit or a, or a proper lockdown on your foot. I have to tie these really tight, as tight as I possibly can for me to get a proper lockdown. The addition of the Ultra Boost midsole just makes the shoe look a lot more sleek as opposed to the bulky EQT support. I will say this though, it still pales in comparison to the Ultra Boost. The cushioning and the comfort is there, but you just don't get the same sort of lockdown with the EQT support silhouette. My heel just never feels like it's in place. It always feels like there's a slight bit of movement, regardless of how tight I lace these or how snug I try to make them. With that being said, they're still way better than an NMD when it comes to comfort, although I would prefer to wear NMDs over these. It's funny that they're called the EQT support, yet they didn't really have any. Might as well call them the EQT deadbeat, am I right? No? Okay. This is still one of my favorite recent cops in my collection because I really like this colorway and the materials used on this are very premium. The upper is adorned in extremely thick, satisfyingly nappy suede that you can just brush to see the different shades. The rose gold Adidas three stripes logo on the lateral and medial sides of the shoe. And the tongue, because it's sort of like this mesh slash neoprene material, it has a softer feel to it and helps bind to the foot versus like a suede material that's going around the rest of the shoe. And in case you didn't notice, I put in the alternate laces. This shoe came with two separate sets of alternate laces. The original laces were sage, like the rest of the shoe. The next two laces were sort of like a neutral gray, and the other one being a salmon slash rose gold color. The details on this shoe are top notch. The sole is a ultra boost sole. You can see the continental rubber is like a light gray. The torsion bar is gold. We have the Adidas logo in gold stitching in the back. Adidas logo on the tongue as well as the concepts logo and we have blue room inspired concepts design on the insoles the toe box is perforated along with a panel below the three stripes on the lateral side of the shoe and that's about it shout out to concepts for making one of the cleanest collabs i've seen this year with that being said please like comment and subscribe i hope you enjoyed my review collage more to come soon pixelated out